What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Or welcome back. Whatever. I feel like absolute shit right now. Way overdid it last week. So usually sometime before TX2, like one to two times a year, definitely always before 2K, I will, uh, I still work at the gym full time. And then I have two full time guys at the shop. And then usually on the weeknights, once I get off from the gym, sorry, I'm backing up. And then on the weekends, obviously, I just hammer at the shop trying to catch up. But anyways, TX2K is always so damn busy for us that I usually take a week off from the gym. Oh my God, I'm blinded. It's so bright right here. And uh, I usually take a week off from the gym and go full time at the shop. And we pull like 16 to 18 hour days, no lot. And it was, uh, I usually work myself sick. So here I am, I'm about to get sick. Oh well. We're really, really close. I'm making this video because in this video we're starting the truck. So we are literally two parts away from driving the truck, but we can still start it. We're waiting on the drive shaft and the rear shocks, which have all been ordered. Probably won't be here till sometime next week. I even tried to expedite it, but you know, everyone's busy this time of year because everyone wants everything right right now. Everyone's preparing for a race or something. And uh, I get it, I sell parts, but some things you just can't get that fast. So yeah, my shocks and drive shaft should be here next week. So the goal is to start the truck today or tomorrow, hopefully tonight. I'm sure there'll be some issues. So we're gonna work through some of those issues and then hopefully start driving the truck around uh, next week and then try and get to the track before TX2K so we can play with the suspension because I have no clue uh, what the suspension is going to do. So I showed you, I don't know if I showed you guys or not, I don't know. I stopped making videos because I was sick of the truck not being done. So we did put a uh, Mike Thomas fab, we worked with Mike to put a nine inch in the truck and uh, really, the nine inch is probably over, no, it is overkill right now, but it's one of those things, I really wanted to do a 15 by 12 double B lock in the rear with like super deep dish wheels. And yeah, I could have shortened the 8.8, but I, I don't know. I just wanted to have a super nice piece that if you want a nine inch, you could do it. So it worked with Mike Thomas Fab and we put it on the website actually already, but it's got, you know, built-in leaf spring perches already. And then since mine was the first one, I had to do the lower shock mounts because we didn't know the distance yet. And then I had to do the anti-roll bar tabs. And I welded all that stuff to the super nice housing. So my welds aren't as good as Mike Thomas Fab's, but if you guys order it, he'll be the one that, you know, completely welds it. Um, so essentially we used, it's three and a half inch axle tubes. It's a Hammer Concepts rear end essentially. It's just built by Mike Thomas. And it's got a billet face plate. I think it's like half inch thick. And so it has an O-ring in it, which is super nice compared to like your normal gasket styles that like, you know, typical nine inch always freaking leaks. And so yeah, it's got billet face plate with the O-ring and three and a half inch axle tubes, big new Ford ends. And then obviously we can outfit it if you want it, but I did a Strains Ultra Pro ultra pro case 40 spline gun drilled axles i just went really nice that way i never have to worry about replacing anything and then i did the lightened hubs and da, 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 tbm brakes obviously and then a 15 by 12 billet specialties which i've had those for a while so anyways all that stuff is new in there and i did i ended up doing cal tracks on the truck also not kel track vikings which we also sell but Caltrax, the actual leaf spring building company. Um, I ended up doing Caltrax on it, so need to play with that. There's just the suspension is something I really got to go figure out. So that's that's gonna take some time. Um, I've got the LRX or LXR, whatever the new Lund racing tuning device. So if you guys want one, you can hit us up. But uh, I did get the new new Lund racing tuning device. So Lund's already sent us a startup tune, so we're gonna get that going. He's, we're obviously on the forefront of the Gen 4s, the Turbo 400. Uh, Manuel's done a lot of the 18 to 20s on a 400, so hopefully these aren't too much different, but essentially the biggest things are you gotta keep, 
a few things from the 10 or 80 in there to make the make the truck happy now it could be even worse because this is a gen 4 so that's the only thing we don't know um, there's just so much electronics involved in these trucks and uh, yeah it's definitely a lot easier on the Mustang so that is going to be oh my god I'm blinded again that's gonna be something we got to figure out so hopefully it's not too bad hopefully it's just like the 18 to 20s have to keep essentially you got to keep the harness in there and plugged in because you know it's a truck you can't just swap a manual configuration in there so hopefully it's not too much work we're about to find out it's a lot of unknowns that's for sure and then I know the biggest issue they ran into was when the truck was in drive so you'd put the shifter in drive and then obviously you'd shift the 400 manually into first gear and then a lot of the I think the only other problems they had after that was sometimes it would pull timing and so then I think they started putting it in manual mode and it was fine so I don't know there's a lot of unknowns for sure I'm hoping the truck starts though today or tomorrow and then obviously when the drive shaft and the shocks come in then we'll have to test all that all those functions so but I'd like to start it today double check everything uh, function tests like the MS 2000 the watt box uh, just pretty much you know check for fuel leaks vac leaks I mean we've changed so many things on the truck so just want to make sure all that stuff's good that way when we start driving we don't have to worry about all that but uh, exciting times for sure 2k is right around the damn corner um, and then obviously we got you know we got a ton of projects in the shop that we're trying to finish up at the same time um, and then we got berries is berries is the next biggest one and we're literally waiting on two parts for berries car to start it so uh, we have to like put a few things back on but the biggest thing that's holding us up right now is two parts that had to be custom ordered so we're really close hopefully we'll be testing soon we'll see you guys at the shop oh, oh. alright guys we're flashing the first tune still can't start it because it uh, already told us that it knows it's not in park so but since the last time, I don't know if I showed you guys, I think you guys have seen all that. Um, we did put a, ended up putting an air motor fuel cell back there, mounted the battery back there, and then here's the, the nine inch with the lower shock mounts that I did. And then I welded the upper shock bar, and then I did weld the anti-roll bar as well. So we're just waiting on the shocks to come in and waiting on the drive shaft, but everything else is looking pretty good. I welded those also. Just will lower track bar mounts, traction bar mounts. Then we got the cow tracks on there now. So I gotta put the bar on. Boom. It might not run, but it looks good. So we finally have in stock our PCM relocation mounts. It's not gonna say Coyote Direct up there. We're just testing some stuff, but it will have little CD logo. So we actually switched to some 3D printed brackets in there. And then this is like a thin aluminum plate. And then we also 3D printed these fuel regulator brackets. If you guys ever have trouble, that's how we always did them. So we made them by hand before and now we have them 3D printed. So if you want some of those, those are available too. And then you think it's gonna start? Okay, you're shifting. Oh yeah, we gotta see. I can already tell it, it's not happy. It's beeping. Hood ajar. Battery state of charge low. Yeah, yeah, I don't give a shit about that. No, take this oh, oh, you did something. It's not saying it's now it says transmission not in park. Park aid fault. That doesn't. That doesn't matter. So guys, the backup plan, if this doesn't work, is to throw a Gen 3 engine in it with a control pack, because it would work. There would just be uh it was a lot of work to get to this point. <laughs> what do you think, Anthony? No. Come on, we got time. We got like four weeks. We can have this thing swapped by the weekend. We'd be good. We got Gen 3 sitting right here, too. But yeah, so we figured out how to make the truck think it's in park. We have essentially the sensor. Let me show you this. We have like a bunch of spare 10 hours right now. But essentially, 
this sensor right here reads, you know, when you're in park and drive, right? So we have this deal plugged into the harness. Then we have this whole harness, with speed sensors and everything, just hanging out in underneath the truck um, because that harness has to be plugged in. You know, the big one that goes on the back, the main harness for the 10R. So we have that plugged in with this deal. So we're able to get this all the way up where it's in park. The only problem is we need a way to shift it to make it think it's in drive. So we can definitely start it. We haven't figured out how to get it in gear yet. So I just put some fuel in it. We're gonna put some trans food in it. And we're gonna see if we can at least get it to run. You saw it start up here first and the new Lund LRX is pretty badass so the only thing we have left to do really is we got to make the upper radiator hose that's why we had a little towel in there to keep it from making a mess but so far we're able to get the shifter in drive we got it in park we got it in drive we're able to rev it everything seems normal so far obviously it's throwing a crap ton of transmission codes but uh, we got to get it out of brake maintenance mode. So if you guys ever do uh, brakes, just don't ever put in brake maintenance mode. Or if you do TBMs or aerospace, just don't put in brake maintenance mode. But if you do put in brake maintenance mode, which you're supposed to do before, then you got to plug the stock brakes back into the connectors back there to get it out of brake maintenance mode. So we still got to do the shifter, put the seats back in, and... Uh, and then yeah, we're just waiting on a drive shaft. So that'd be the next thing. Like we already sent or talked to Lund. Everything's working how it's supposed to, the best that it can right now until we get the drive shaft in and we can start driving it around. Cause I think the only issues they had was either the shifter trying to put itself in park or maybe the shift solenoid codes pulling timings. I don't know yet. So that's something none of us know until we start driving it. Just going based off kind of what they've done before. But it's pretty cool to hear this thing again because it hasn't ran in, I don't even know how long. Four, five months? I don't know. I had this thing only for like two months before I yanked it apart, but. Oh man, it looks so sick on those 15 by 12 double bead lock. The nine inch was definitely worth it. As long as we can get it to work good. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed the first startup. Anthony and I got a lot of work to do over the weekend. To Get this thing ready we're literally just waiting on a drive shaft though we gotta make the upper radiator hose and uh, mount the shifter and then uh, start putting some boost to this thing <laughs>